In this week's episode of Studio Inter, we'll be doing a full postmortem on Inter's crisis. With focus on the Roma game, we'll be looking at everything from if Inzaghi should be sacked to the tactical issues, who could replace Inzaghi if he leaves, this week's Moratti, Moji and Frog, preview of Barcelona and Sassuolo games, and much, much more. Everything on Studio Inter on centreinter.com. Benvenuti, bentornati to another edition of Studio Inter. I'm your host, Nima Tale Ruzzari, welcoming you to an episode which I have a feeling will not be too positive, because there's not that much to be positive about if you're an Interista. But before we get to all of that, let me begin by introducing my panelists. Uh, we're joined by our very good friend, the, the artist. He told me before we started recording that he's got nothing to be positive about. So I guess we should refer, refer to him as the artist formerly known as Mr. Positivity, Mohamed Nasa. Hey, everyone. And uh, yeah, apologies about the scheduling issue with the preview this week. Uh, we'll be back on starting uh, next weekend. But uh, yeah, it's a very, very grim, uh, grim time. So uh, looking forward to get uh, some therapy done uh, on the podcast. And uh, yeah, let's go. And we're also joined by our man in Milan, our good friend, Mr. Fulvio Santucci. How you doing, Fulvio? Hi guys, good to be here. New season. Uh, <laughs> feels like okay, so feels feels a bit like uh, the pre 2019 or something like that. Mm. So after all this pandemic, all we say is just let's get back to normal, to normal. Let's get back to normal. Where we're back to normal, to our normal. It's interbanter. <laughs> it's interbanter. <laughs> no, just joking. But still, but still, yes, tough, tough times, tough, tough times, guys. Mm. And we have a debutante joining us for the very first time. He has a podcast called Brothers of the World Podcast. I will be, will be linking to that. Make sure to check him out. Making a studio into debut. Welcome, Mr. Michael McDuffie. Well, yeah. Um, hi, everyone. Hi, Nima, Mo, Fulvio. Nice to meet you all. Um, Nima, uh, we talk pretty often. But yeah, um, what better circumstances for a debut than <laughs> the worst circumstances possible? So really looking forward to getting into it with everyone. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Look, let's get right into it because I, I mean, I want to start. Uh, we'll, we'll go into the Roma game as well because I, I mean, I, I, I know a lot of people were angry about what Simone Inzaghi said. I personally think he was right. I think it was Inter's best game of the season. I think it was the game where you saw Inzaghi football. But the fact that it was Inter's best se- best game of the season means also that Inter have sucked incredibly so far this season, which in and of itself is a problem. But um, before we get to the Roma game, um, I think we have to talk about this, the Simone Inzaghi out-in situation, because Gazzetta dello Sport last night, I don't know if they published it, if it was just an article they had going out, but they basically made up some phony story, which they deleted, that he's getting sacked, and uh, if he doesn't win against Barcelona and Sassuolo, and and Kiev was going to take over, and then, and all that stuff. But they, you know, whether or not that's true, they were just having that. Um, you know, uh, <laughs> published by mistake remains to be seen. But it is true that Simone Inzaghi is, I mean, th- there is, th- there, there are issues at Inter and that he could be sacked soon. Um, I think, that, that, or, or let me put it to this, this way, it's not a certainty that he could be, that he will be sacked soon, but it's, it's a certainty that unless something changes, he could be sacked soon. Um, and I want to get where everyone's standing on this issue. Um, personally, I think I don't ever want to sack a coach, no matter who it is, unless he's lost the dressing room. And if there is someone better out there that you can afford to get. I think there are 0 for 2 there. This dressing room is fully behind Simone Inzaghi, based on the statements from the players, Lautaro, Di Marco, Skriniar, Handanovic, etc. And Inter can't afford to have Inzaghi on the payroll whilst also bringing in someone else. Even if Thomas Tuchel has won more trophies, uh, bigger trophies, I don't, A, I don't think he's interested, and B, Inter, can, Inter can't afford him. So th- that's where I stand with that. So I'm willing to give to continue until at least the World Cup, uh, until the World Cup break. Um, where, where are you on this, uh, Mo? Where, where are you? Inzaghi in, Inzaghi out? Yeah, no, I'm, uh, I think uh, us old, uh, older folk are a bit more tempered in our, uh, in our approach to uh, managerial changes. I think ultimately, like you said, it's, uh, it's not even whether whether 
whether we can uh, afford a substitute, it's whether there's a substitute available. Either way, this is a very odd season with the World Cup coming in the middle of the, the season. So like you said, at least until the World Cup. And honestly, I, there's there's no no better replacement I find on the market. I'm, I'm not a, personally, I'm not a fan of uh, Tuchel. So I don't think there would be an improvement on, uh, on Inzaghi in the sense that where I think Inzaghi lacks, which isn't tactics or whatever, it's, 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 it's winning record, it's, 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 uh, it's killer instinct, which I've repeated many times in this podcast. I don't think Tuchel is that guy either. I think Tuchel is prob- problematic. He's uh, caused issues at uh, Dortmund. He's caused issues at uh, PSG. This isn't the sort of manager that we need right now. If we're going to get an unstable manager, then it better be someone with a, a real record of winning league trophies and cups, not just a, a fluke uh, Champions League. Uh, you know, so so yeah, I'm 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 definitely as as disheartened as I am and as and as of little faith as I have with Inzaghi. I don't think the decision to sack Inzaghi at the moment would, in any context, be the right one. Fulvio, where are you on this? Are you are you with me and Mo on this, or do you think that no, we, we need to get rid of uh, we need to get rid of Simone? Well, uh, to be honest, I don't have um, a definite position here. Um, I mean, uh, I, I mean, I agree with you uh, because um, it's it's something that uh, it's actually balanced. It's a balanced concept to what you what you think, uh, even because you need to be realistic. Uh, of course, uh, everyone is angry here. But uh, let's not forget that uh, uh, to start uh, the, mm, the the target of Inter for the season is not a Scudetto. It's the Champions League spot. I mean, for for the for the players, uh, for the for the coach, probably is might be the Scudetto. But the the management is okay with uh, the the incomes uh, of the of the Champions League spot. This is something that someone tends to forget sometimes, but it still stands. And I think uh, that, uh, and I think that Inter can actually achieve the fourth place despite this uh, this false start. And uh, on the second, uh, on the sec- on a second perspective, I believe that uh, when you have a so tight schedule that you need to play basically each two days, uh, I don't think that you might actually benefit from a change. I mean, um, how do you prepare the games? Uh, how the the new coach, who the coach, but this is something that actually is uh, it's something that to to discuss afterwards about the, about who, but uh, how this new coach can actually do something different uh, from the from the um, fr- from Inzaghi if uh, he hasn't actually have uh, the material time to coach the team because you don't have this time you got to play all the seven games in 30 days. And uh, when I'm talking about Champions League, I'm talking about away days, uh, and I'm talking about uh, a really, really packed schedule. Uh, everyone tends to not do something like that because it's not beneficial. And uh, as you, as you was stating before, and I agree with that, uh, it's better to uh, it's better to wait for the for the World Cup break. You have two months of break. You can manage to do everything, even because uh, the majority of your players are not with you. So you can actually do the things uh, when uh, the players are not uh, are not affected by this directly um so let's let's wait and see but uh, on this uh, point of the season uh, i believe uh, that uh, changing the coach is like rolling the dice it's like a Moratti move, but we are not in the Moratti I was, anymore. I was just going to say that. You, you know how much I love Massimo Moratti, but I've never been more grateful for him not owning Inter than right now. Because when things weren't going well, he was the worst owner ever. I mean, I still haven't got over him sacking Gigi Simoni. <laughs> like yeah, just... yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, uh, everyone, everyone is, uh, is witnessing that things are going south here. Nobody is, uh, nobody is denying that. But uh, I mean, like changing the coach right now, uh, it's like rolling dice. Uh, I mean, the problems of Inter are not uh, only at coaching level. And uh, mm. we, have, we already have been in this place. We have plenty of years in which uh, we kept uh, uh, doing the same mistake, changing the coach, believing that uh, magically <coughs> everything is solved. But it's not like that. We don't need to. We don't need to cut uh, to cut uh, the, the coach to to solve the problems. Here we have uh, the old tree to be cut. 
you know what I mean? So it's uh, it's something that you cannot solve uh, uh, by just by swapping the coaches. Uh, you can mm. probably put uh, some, uh, you know, uh, you can put a, a bandaid here, but not solving the problem, definitely. Putting a Snoopy bandaid on a gunshot wound. Yeah, um, Mike, Michael, where, Mike, where are you on this, Mikey? I mean, um, are you, are we, are we four, are we, are we all, all four of us against Inzaghi out, uh, or, or are you Inzaghi out? And if so, who would you replace with? Yeah, no, um, I think the Inzaghi out movement that has, you know, sprouted <laughs> out of social media has been very reactionary, and I get it to a, to an extent because uh, we did get used to some steady winning. But to go back to the coaching carousel that, I mean, we've seen from Inter in multiple eras, I would say, um, I just don't think it would be very tenable for anybody at the club for that to start happening because we already have a squad where there's uncertainty. There's always, you know, always somebody saying that somebody's about to be sold. Um, there's players that may leave. There's players like Acherby that are, you know, very transient, probably not going to stay after this season. Um I just think that if you have a manager that, or you don't have a solid manager, you have just Kivu or Stankovic or whoever, and you don't want to start doing the whole like legends as band aids. Like you can't do that. Um, I remember I just, Milan doing that, and they absolutely they destroyed Gattuso, they destroyed Seedorf, they destroyed Filippo Inzaghi, they destroyed Monte, and Montella was not a legend for them. But you know what I mean. I'm 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 against doing things like that because. Okay, all of those except for Gattuso weren't really coaches. Pirlo, Juve did the same thing with Pirlo, but I, I think because I actually think that someone like Kivu is just getting started. He could actually, you know, he has he could actually become a good coach. Uh, Stan, Stankovic could become a good coach if you give them the time and don't burn them out. Um, I, I don't want to burn the legends out. Yeah, no, that is that I think that would just make everything feel worse at Inter. If you can't even look at your legends with rose-colored glasses, like you have nothing. <laughs> so, um you really have to keep Inzaghi here for me. Um I think he'll figure it out. I think this was a baby step in the right direction mm. this match, even if it was a loss. And I mean, I'm not one to say that a loss is ever a good thing, no. but we saw we saw something. I think Everyone needed that time apart for the international break. I think it allowed everyone to slow, you know, their role. Um, all, all the crises slow down a little bit. Everyone mm -hmm. just gets back to playing football. Um, and if we could just stop having blackouts, um, I think, you know, things will start to look up. Well, I mean, we're going to get to the Roma game as well, but I want to talk about the, the pressing issues. And, and one pressing issue is I think we have to talk about now um, is was it a mistake to bring back Romelu Lukaku over Paolo Dybala. I'm starting to lean, or actually, I think it was a mistake. And that doesn't mean that I, and, and by saying that, I don't, I'm not saying that I, don't, I think Lukaku is going to be a flop or Lukaku is, is, you know, because he's injured, he's never going to succeed at Inter again. No, that's not what I'm saying. I think that the mistake, it, it was a mistake to not bring, to not bring Dybala. Because given how Inzaghi played last season, given the, the manner in which Inzaghi created, overloaded the spaces in, mid, in, 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 in midfield, creating triangles, numerical advantages and sawing himself through less vertical movements than Conte for sure, but still vertical movements and the kind of ball, one touch ball pass, passing midfield dominance, possession dominance that Inter played, I think and also with Lautaro Martinez becoming the bomber that he really did towards the end. And 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 I think someone like Dybala and him, they would have they would have been they would have played. They they would have had they would have enjoyed themselves together. I think with Lukaku, you yes, okay, you don't you can't play that all in first all important first long ball with, with Dybala. But Inter don't really do that right now either. Instead it's um, I feel okay, Di Marco. Then you 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 won't get as much out of him. But I, I I'm starting. I, I'm I'm really I really think I really believe that Dybala should have been brought in. And also because Romelu Lukaku is only on loan, Graham Potter can turn around in June and say I want Romelu Lukaku back. There's not a goddamn thing Inter can do about that. Jekyll's contract expires in June. Thank God, you know. Let's be honest, he's 36, 37 years old. He should not be offered a contract extension. If they do that, then I don't know what to tell you. Uh, then, then we're 
officially in the banter era. It's 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 Batistuta Rocky level because Jeko is finished. Um, so you're just stuck with two strikers, Lautaro and Correa, and Correa has been any every any has been very overwhelming. So my 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 issue is. Was it? A, I, I really think it was a mistake. They should have gone after Dybala. He's only 28 years old. He's been great at Roma. He's becoming the main man at Roma. And I think next to the midfield that, that Inter have and 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 Lautaro, I think it would have been a success. Um, I'm keen to hear. I'll start with you, Mikey. My, my, Mikey, what, what do you think? Do you agree with that? Do you disagree with that? Um, I think it's almost hard to make an assessment because we haven't seen Lukaku play really at all. So to call it a mistake tactically, I, I, I don't think, I, myself personally, I don't think I could do that yet. But you could call it a mistake in that you haven't got this guy fit yet. You haven't had him on the pitch. You haven't been able to play whatever kind of football you want to play with him. Um, the loan situation we know, and I mean, uh, I guess that's probably something being worked on even now, depend, like regardless of what Graham Potter is asking for. I mean, I don't watch too much of Chelsea. I don't really <laughs> keep up with them too much but yeah i i don't think that it's a mistake tactically we can't call it that yet maybe mm. long term yes because he also is not getting any younger but mm. i mean dibala also came off with an injury if i'm not mistaken in this match um, yeah but i mean if we if we look at the first eight games um the the output from dibala when he's played and he's played pretty much every game and lukaku who's missed quite a bit is 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 night and day I mean, not just for goals, but also chances created and 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 what he's done. I mean, he's. He, he, I don't think, uh, like uh, like what I said when I prefaced it. I, I I'm not tactically saying. I'm not saying that Flukaku was a flop. I'm saying that I think tactically would have suited Simon Inzaghi's football better to to have Dybala, if that makes sense. Yes, yes, it does, and I see what you're saying. I just I want to see what Lukaku's going to do in this team, like on a run of matches in good okay. form, before I you know really fair enough. assessment that far. Fair enough, fair enough. Fulvio, um, what about you? I mean, do you think where are you on this issue? Um, are, are you a little um, bit where where Mikey is on this, or or because I mean, there's also the physical aspect as well. I mean, if we look at Romelu Lukaku's career, and to, except for those two years with Antonio Conte. He was he's he struggled physically. I mean, yes, he scored like one of the top twenty. He's I think he's top twenty one or top twenty all time Premier League goal scorers. But at United he struggled. At Chelsea he was unwatchable. There were physical issues as well. It's just those two years with with Conte and and um, Pintus that he was world class. I mean, what, what, what do you think? Uh, I'm pretty much on the on Michael's side here, to be honest. Um, we we don't we, we didn't see we didn't see enough about about this to to judge. What I can tell you for sure is that nobody and I mean nobody when it was announced for the second time hinted at uh, something about injuries. Nobody actually. Uh, while uh, Dybala was actually injury prone, but I don't think that's the the right key to do that. I think that's uh, and I would choose again Lukaku um, because. Uh, when you have when you got Lukaku, you got uh, something that uh, is uh, uh, on the paper at least uh, is uh, a luxury for this kind of league, and so this is the same league in which Dybala struggled. And I mean, uh, you, mm. you got a lot of issues, of course, uh, but he always played in Serie A and uh, basically never made the difference uh, for a whole season except for the for the whole Palermo times. While Lukaku actually was some kind of guarantee, even because the group would have uh, greeted Lukaku differently, um, I would say that uh, if the choice was between these two, and I actually actually proposed this kind of uh, question back in the beginning of July on my Twitter, and everybody, practically not everybody, but at least uh, 80% went with Lukaku, I believe that if the choice was between these two, I would have chosen Lukaku again. But of course, of course, the deal at the at the beginning of this of this story, uh, beginning of second announcement uh, at, the, at the end of June, the deal was to bring on both players, and that would be completely different. A completely exactly. Different story. Exactly. Yeah. I'm with you 100% there. Mo, where are you on this? What's your uh, what's your take? Uh, do you think it's too soon to say anything about? Um, about, uh, you know, tactically, if Lukaku suits better or Dybala suits, where are you? Listen, I think uh, Dybala is, 
is a pro- uh, we've said this before, man. I, I think he's a problematic, difficult player to incorporate in any side. So uh, I think the the good patch of form that he's having at the moment doesn't. It's difficult to extrapolate a good season as it would have been. Uh, you know, looking like it. It's too early to judge, but I think the move would have been uh, would have been to probably offload Korea and then bring in both. Uh, Dybala and uh, no, for me that would have been the best move. But yeah, no, without I, a doubt, I, I would tend to agree with both Mikey and uh, yeah. No, no, I 100% agree. Uh, on, on, I mean, a, a club like Inter should be having, you know, should have Dybala and Lukaku next to Lautaro and and Jeko for sure, and, and Joaquin Correa can, I don't know, barbecue or whatever he does best. Um, no, it's 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 one of those pressing topics that everyone's talking about. So I wanted to talk about that. Um, let's go more now towards the the uh, the Roma game, and I want to begin with you, uh, Mo. Listen, um, it's I think Inter actually it wasn't a fantastic game by Inter by any stretch of the imagination, but the opening goal and 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 I do think that Rui Patricio. I mean, this was a game of goalkeeping howlers. Uh, very poor goalkeeping, all, all you know, by both both teams' goalkeepers. But I, but the movement and, and passing which led to the opening goal is Inzaghi ball, and that was very encouraging. And what what I also find really encouraging is how in the second half when Inter struggled, they worked themselves into the team, and or say so they worked themselves into the game, and they took over, and and they should have. They, they 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 should have created more and they should have scored, um, but they didn't. And and of course Simone Inzaghi, I think I tweeted it out. Now's the time to make a change, and he keeps waiting too long every single game. It's not even about what minute he does it in. It's about where the, when the game is in the balance, he's not proactive, regardless of if it's the 51st, 65th, 75th, or 45th. It, he he just doesn't seem able to proactively change the face of the game when the game is hanging in the balance. Something that I think Pioli is a master at this season in the Serie A. I think he's, I mean, the game against Empoli, for example, for Milan, he wins that game for, for Milan by proactively coaching, by changing things. And and you see that the players react to that very well. But I want to hear where you are on this, because, I mean, I, I think Inter lose because of individual errors from Samir Handanovic and the defense falling asleep at a set piece. What, what, what are your thoughts, Mo? Uh, sorry, uh, mute issues. Uh, so, yeah, I think uh, we've been saying this last season as well. Uh, uh, individual errors have cost into the uh, uh, to last season. But um, this season, it seems to be and I think the fact that Inzaghi is so hesitant to impose his ideas upon the game and, and impose his will is probably a sign of his uh, nervousness, of the, the sort of mental state that he's in. Um, I think, of course, individual errors have caused us, uh, have cost us mostly Andanovic, and it's telling when he says, you know, our goalkeeper didn't have to make a single save. And he, yeah. And he's 2-1. Two, two it's 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 a big thing. It's not a small statement that you take lightly. So it, it is individual errors for sure. But also the fact that we don't win games is because of, like you say, uh, a problem in taking the bull by the horns in matches tactically. And like you know, and and that's definitely not something that's definitely not something that a winning manager lacks. Whether it's the confidence to do so, the self-belief, uh, the the willingness to put yourself out on the line, you know, uh, the double substitution, uh, uh, Rosovic and uh, where, where the two guys in the yellow, that, that that is probably symptomatic of Inzaghi this season more than anything else. Uh, so I think the reason we lose matches or we drop points is, of course, due to individual errors. But the reason we don't win them is because of Inzaghi at the moment. And like Mike. You know, I, I think that it, there's a, it's entirely possible that uh, he might be able to turn it around. And uh, there is a good manager in there somewhere. But whether there is there is the fire, I don't know. But 
it could be. It could be his defining season. I really hope so. But at this point in time, the reason we're not winning is because of Inzaghi. The reason why we're dropping points is because of the two errors. Fair, fair analysis. Fulvio, do you agree with that? Um, where, where, what are your thoughts? Yeah, basically. Uh, basically, it's agreeable. Um, I mean, my impression watching the game uh, was uh, that uh, when Dybala scored uh, the 1-0, uh, I actually had the strong, uh, um, the strong opinion that uh, the match the match slipped away. But, but just because I, I watched the body language of our players, and this is something that uh, led at, uh, at, uh, eventually to the individual errors. So we're talking about individual errors, but we're, I think we are just focusing on the, um, on the final part of the problem. Uh, what led to individual errors was, was the approach. It's not, it's not the same time. Uh, sorry, it's not, um, um, it, it's not, uh, uh, sorry, slipped, slipped the top. Um, I mean, uh, it's not uh, the, the, um, the only time that uh, this happened. Um, and uh, you see actually that Inter, you, you, you told that Nima, uh, the Inzaghi ball in the last half an hour was actually mm. visible. I mean, probably not yeah. at the right speed, but no, it was no. actually something that we witnessed. All right. Yeah. But then what happened? And it was the same in the derby, if you, if you think about it. Then what happened? It happened actually the same thing happened in the derby. We just lost the ball uh, in a very naive way, I would say. And uh, we conceded, and after after we conceded, uh, the, the match was actually practically finished for us, because apart from that, the Inter entered into the into the second part of the game with uh, something struggling in their mind, and uh, just the bar uh, taken from Charanoglu on a set piece cannot uh, be enough to win no. a game like that, right? So um, it's uh, I, the the impression was that. Uh, uh, I, I had the same impression I, I had on the, um, on the on the era um, er, before Conte that whatever is the result, uh, Inter players are. Um, I mean, uh, I don't say satisfied, but uh, I mean, uh, they can they can accept that. And uh, I think uh, that uh, this is happening because uh, the players who are just uh, um, doing uh, the mistakes again and again always got away with the, with them. Uh, mm. that's pointed on Danovic right now, right? He has the backup right now. He has the backup, but he's not in discussion. He actually keep conceding clear mistakes, a very mm. clear mistakes at this level. And he always mm. got away with that, right? So I believe the player are not actually so uh, worried about making mistakes like with Conte, because you remember Conte, what, what did with Lautaro uh, in a game against, uh, versus Roma with Roma. the Scudetto 31. <laughs> Right, he, he took it he out took because he was not satisfied, and the, the scudetto was actually sealed. Uh, was satisfied and actually discussed with the guy and argued with the guy. Right, that was the right kind of attitude in which the players knew that they cannot make mistakes because mistakes are not acceptable. And right now, I don't see this, and I believe that uh, these kind of things uh, um, mm, had a strong contribution to make individual errors uh, in the way they did errors, because they actually did the same mistakes. The goal uh, uh, of um, uh, the second goal of Roma, the smalling one, was actually the same situation of the goal uh, uh, versus Udinese, the own goal of Skriniar. It was actually yeah. the same issue, yeah. right? So if you concede uh, twice the same goal in two weeks, uh, that means that you are actually happy you got away with it. I don't have another explanation, guys. No, the, the the Skriniar situation in and of itself warrants talk, and 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 also, but but the the set pieces, as you mentioned, the, the I don't understand because there's no doubt in my mind that they work on set pieces in training, but they don't seem they just switch off, and like you said, they they can get away with it, and when he rotates, when he plays D'Ambrosio or, or whoever he plays, they're not good enough, and they don't deliver the results because he ends up losing you see anyway you see you see it seems to me that this team is not interesting in winning i mean mm. uh, it's it's not something that i can tell for sure but uh, this is no. what uh, their body language actually communicates me but if you see if you see milan for instance uh, milan concede one nil at empoli at in, at injury time by a mistakes from the goalkeeper and yeah. they did Howler. do anything but but going going forward going ahead uh, and go win the game in injury time again. So this is the attitude, the attitude of a team who wants to win. 
right? While you had you had uh, one half and uh, also other minutes uh, to uh, to go ahead with the winning, and you could because actually Roma was not attacking you, and you end up like that with only one one chance created by a set piece, and that kind of goal conceded. For me, the picture is clear at, the, at this point. I think it's atteggiamento, the word in Italian. I agree. Uh, the the, yeah, the, the, the exactly. attitude is wrong. Yeah, the attitude is completely wrong because I don't think it's a tactical and technical issue. I think it's a mental issue. So I'm with you on that. Well, what about you, Mikey? Mikey, what, what do you think about the where are you on the Roma game in terms of uh, yeah overall impressions is what which we've discussed. Yeah, I mean, it kind of felt like Groundhog Day in a sense. Like, a lot of these matches this season have been Inter goes up early but doesn't impress, and then you're just waiting around for the shoe to drop. And, I mean, once, like Fulvio said, once the Dybala goal came, you could see you could see the players just kind of, oh, here we go again. Um, like, hope it's not too bad this time. Um, that being <laughs> said, though, I thought there was a bit of a response. Uh, you mentioned it earlier that Inter worked their way back into the match. And, I mean, we, we, we of course, saw the Celanolu chance. Um, Aslani had a chance that almost went in. Uh, but close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. So it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. But I, uh, it, it's tough because you see, like, glimpses of this team trying to break through but then they do fall back into that resignation that seems to be all too prevalent in this in this squad. I don't know if it's something that starts from the captaincy and you know rots from the head down, or if it's even higher than that. It's it, somebody needs to find a spark for this team, and they need to find it quickly. That's a <laughs> absolutely, Mikey. They sure do. That's that's really that, that leads me really really nice into the next segment which is luckily Inter only have the have to play Barcelona you know uh, <laughs> uh, Barcelona <laughs> who in the who in the La Liga who are top of uh, La Liga right now and um, uh, who are top of, of, of La Liga right now um, and, and 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 if I'm not mistaken I'm, I'm just looking it up just to, yeah they've only conceded one goal in the Serie A uh, sorry, in the La Liga, one goal, top of the city, top of the La Liga, 19 points, 19 goals scored, one goal conceded, and they've got a certain Polish gentleman up top who's scoring for fun. Uh, nine goals he scored in La Liga. I mean, <laughs> Robert Lewandowski. I I'm more worried about this than I am going into to Bayern now because they the, the signings they made I mean if leaving aside the ridiculous financial situation they're in and somehow they're allowed, they're in worse debt than Inter are and yet they're allowed to spend more than than Inter ever have uh, in the Sooning era is let, let's leave all that aside but the fact that they the, the fact that the players they bought in and the way that they control possession and can retain possession with Gavi, Pedri and all these guys, it's, I mean, I, I'm genuinely scared for that game. Um, what, what, what do you think? I mean, what are your thoughts, Fulvio? Are you, are you also scared or uh, are, are you, are you more, con- are you confident that this could be the, the turning point? I mean, what are you thinking? Well, Nima, you know that I'm, uh, I used on this show to give uh, a different perspective than the usual. And uh, that's what I'm, I want to do. Um, because uh, I think that uh, um, it might be actually a good chance for the for the Inter players uh, to play this game uh, because for for us for a lot of reasons because it's the Champions League of course uh, and uh, because uh, we got now into the situation in which of course uh, the the idea uh, at the beginning was to to go to the um, to the knockout knockout round. But at the moment, uh, for the things that you said, uh, uh, seems that uh, uh, it's uh, the, the pressure of the game is in the end of Barcelona because Barcelona is performing, so everybody is expected to win the game. Everybody is expected to control the game uh, tactically and uh, in terms of possession. Uh, um, so you know, it's something that uh, could actually just uh, just be on the on the good side with Inter. I mean, it's in the history of Inter to do the best performances when everybody did not expect something like that. So who knows? It, it, it might be probably something something like that. It might be a night like that. Um, but yes, of course. I, 
of course, I'm worried about that because Barcelona have, have, have a lot of uh, good players. Uh, they actually run a lot more than us, or probably a more oh, better yes. than us. Oh, um, yes. And so we don't have actually players. We got we we still in in the in the squad uh, we uh, keep uh, losing players able to play this kind of games, uh, and now we got. Uh, uh, a key player like Brozovic uh, that is not part of the game, Lukaku is not part of the game, um, so we are losing uh, we are losing pieces uh, very important uh, to play these kind of games and to give uh, the, all the group the strength to play this kind of game, so of course it's worrying, but uh, once again I think that uh, um, if uh, I know this team uh, this team uh, if, if I'm not mistaken is in, in, in a situation uh, uh, previously of the Scudetto, so if this is the same drill, if this is the drill once again, this team might do, might give the best when they have nothing to lose, and this is something on the situation in which they could have nothing to lose because, uh, of course, everybody expects to win, the pressure is there, but probably more are expected to win against uh, Sassuolo and not Barcelona. So if you win against Barcelona, I don't think you can uh, turn around, uh, ups turn upside down the situation. But uh, of course, you can uh, have uh, a bit of that spark uh, of um, uh, who, uh, which Michael was hinting. That Let's is see. the most. I mean, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a positive, it's a positive assessment. It's probably optimistic assessment, I would say. But uh, at some point, uh, this uh, this uh, this team might have uh, a reaction, a pride reaction, uh, yeah. on something like that. So, might be the night. Who knows? I I I. That is the most, if you have been an Interista a long time, because only someone who's been an Interista for at least 10, 15, 20 years can can even think like that, that if we beat Barcelona, we're 100% losing against Osuolo. <laughs> like that is... Exactly, that is, exactly. That's, <laughs> that's our life. That's our life since forever. Like, I couldn't have said it better myself. Brilliant. Um, Mo, uh, where, where are you on this? Do you think if we beat Barcelona, we're toast against uh, Sassuolo? Well, I mean, we're toast against Sassuolo anyway. This this goes without <laughs> saying. We've watched, and I, I haven't looked at the schedule yet, but I, I, I mean, I hope it's not a lunchtime fixture. If it is, then, you know... Might as well uh, not, oh, uh, not it's, 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 it's an afternoon fixture. It's an afternoon fixture. Uh, yeah, I mean, if, yeah. if the sun's up over the Mape and Inter are playing, then uh, just send it to Primavera, you know. So, uh, <laughs> Brilliant. Unless you have Walter, no, unless yeah. Walter Mazzari is there and you be, you have Sefi and Haider. 7-0. 7-0, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, but no, uh, no I, I, I mean, I, I really appreciate uh, Fulvio's sentiment regarding... The Barca game, and I think, of course, you know we've we've seen this happen many times uh, over the years that Inter do this this Pazza stuff. Uh, but my only issue at the moment is that, that uh, I don't view for outperforming Barcelona. Like it's not a Conte Mourinho team where you can rely on um, on strength of character, uh, counter attacking, and actually. Defending in a in a low block, uh, playing uh, attrition sort of football, and 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 winning, but at the same time, Inzaghi ball isn't anywhere near as as uh, complete, as fluid, as dominant, or as uh, as 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 well formed at the moment. It's still very embryonic, at least in this uh, in this uh, sort of version of Inter, uh, to be able to dominate a, a team like Barca. So. It, it must be like if Inter are going to take any points from Barcelona, uh, let alone three points, it needs to be something you know, some sort of a miraculous night that I don't think will reflect upon the season at large. You know, I think it'll, it, it'll be some some fluky sort of thing. Barca get two two players sent off, someone uh, Lewandowski goes off with an ACL, something, something or the other. Uh, but <laughs> I don't see an avenue. Where Inter actually can take points against Barca. I hope I'm wrong. I hope Inzaghi and the players prove me wrong. But at this point in time, there's there's nothing in the side. There's absolutely nothing. There's no defensive solidity. There's no midfield mm. control. If, mm. if if anything, maybe maybe attacking attacking strength. But I I just see uh, 
Lautaro isolated up front by himself, mm. uh, playing. It's, it's. I, I, I can't see it. I just, I really can't see it. Mm. And that is from Mo Nassar, who we used to call Mr. Positivity. Um, Mike, <laughs> Mikey, what, what, <laughs> Mikey, what, what, I mean, going into the Barca game, are you, are you just as miserable as us old middle-aged guys or, or have you got some youthful energy and, and positivity hidden somewhere? Cause we, cause we could sure use it right about now. No, I'll say this team, it, it can age you. This club ages you in a way that you know, most <laughs> most things do not or the things that do are some of the most terrible things you could find in the world. But I expect kind of a match that we usually see when one of these bigger teams comes to San Siro. I mean, we didn't really see it with Bayern because uh, Bayern played very well against Inter mm. uh, to start off the Champions League campaign. But like last season when Real Madrid came to town – um. You know, Inter played a really good match on the pitch, but, you know, didn't get the goals, didn't have the just the like anything on the the um, final third of the pitch to be clinical enough to get the goals when they needed them. They weren't ruthless enough. That's the word I was looking for. That's why I was tripping. But um, yeah, actual effectiveness. Good, yeah. Yeah. I see a good performance. But I don't see the ruthlessness coming, and then I see Barcelona getting a goal or two, and then it being, you know, one nil, two nil, maybe three, um, a loss. And I hope I'm wrong. Um, I never want to be right when I say something like that. But that's that, that's kind of how I see this going. I see a decent performance, and yeah, no result. Yeah, I'm I'm with you right. I'm right with you right there, Michael. I uh, Mikey, I I don't see Inter winning this, and I think a, even if they give a pr- pride. If they if they put pride in like Fulvio said, I I just don't see them beating this Barca side. I re- I really don't. I think Lewandowski is gonna. I mean, I saw the lineup, the predicted lineup by Sky Sport Italia, and they're talking about playing Stefan de Frey. And I don't know, man. Let's <laughs> just say Stefan de Frey in this form, in in this in this current state against Robert Lewandowski is just get the hell out of here. So I'm I, I think I think three 0 Barca. That's where I am. I'm, I, I hate to depress people, but I think 3-0 Barca. What about you, Michael? Give us a prediction and, and, and goal scores. Do you think it's going to be like one of those Lewandowski blowouts? Um, No. When I see Barcelona, when we have to play Barcelona, I always look on the bench or I look for one of the younger players that they have that they always bring through because they have like an endless supply of young players. Um, So I think it's going to be someone like Pedri or Gavi that's going to score for them. Um, I'll say 2-0, and then, yeah, Pedri and Gavi. Mm, Nice. Fulvio, predictions for Barcelona? Well, based on what I said before, uh, I cannot uh, cannot go with so much much positivity, (laughs) and especially after I heard your results. uh, But, uh, yeah, I need to be your, you know, I need to be your counterpart here, probably. Yes, you do. You do. Yeah, I would say, okay, so let's try to do uh, something like that uh, and uh, go with a proud performance, uh, but uh, probably not uh, a win, uh, but uh, neither a loss. So let's go with a draw and I would say two each. I, I can live with that. I'll bite your hand off, Fulvio, for that for that result. <laughs> what, what, what about you, Mo? What, what, what are your prediction going into this? Yeah, the names that uh, that uh, Mikey uh, says, you know, Pedri, Gavi. I don't know if you remember, like, Pro Evolution Soccer way back in, like, 2001 when they didn't have the licenses for the names of the players. Yeah, I do. And they I have remember. these ridiculous, like, uh, somewhat somewhat uh, authentic names. I can't remember the players' names. I yeah, know. R- Rival- that, uh, Rivaldo was Rivaldo. Jorkaev was Jerkoff. <laughs> um, it was, I remember, it was, it was brilliant. Yeah, well, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so La Messiah seems to print, print out, uh, like, uh, pump out these players in uh, Pro Evolution, the uh, uh, circa 2000 names. But anyway, side note, I think it's, uh, I liked, uh, I liked uh, Mikey's uh, sort of uh, uh, comparison to uh, the, the game against Real Madrid last year. Yeah, it's, it'll be one of those, like, uh, we we keep on punching and punching and punching, but the, our our opponent is just too smart, too experienced uh, to 
you know they they roll they move they uh, and and we're just unable to land land anything so i think it's just uh yeah maybe a 2-0 2-0 not a, not a disaster but the same as a, the same as the Bayern game where you know it might as well have been 8-0 uh, it's it's the, the the match is never in in, in contest it was like the mm. result was never in doubt it's going to be one of those uh, miserable nights mm. Well, okay, then, then I mean, Fulvio, so you said if Inter win, they'll lose against Sassuolo, but if they draw Sass- if they draw Barcelona, what happens against Sassuolo? <laughs> uh, well, that's a tricky question. Uh, that's a tricky question, Nima. I believe that uh, if things uh, will go, like I said, uh, everybody will praise Inter for the performance, uh, so the, the outcome is the same. Uh, praising Inter for the performance, uh, they just go with a lot of uh, expectation of Sassuolo game, uh, at the end of the day, there's a loss. <laughs> Love it, absolutely love it. <laughs> and, and you know, and you know, and you know, Pinamonti, who couldn't score—I don't want to swear—but couldn't score in a beep. <laughs> he will score against Inter. He'll score three against Inter. Like it's just, it's just, it's written in the clouds, isn't it? Because I watched their game against Salernitana. The guy is like they—they they dominated, and he was invisible. He scored from the penalty spot, but you know he's going to score against Inter, right? Yeah. <laughs> But funny thing, funny thing, he claimed uh, he had uh, issues uh, during the game, like intestinal issues during the game. And especially oh. when, yeah, especially when he go, when he go for the penalty, he said that uh, he actually had the, the blurry glance uh, to, because it was uh, actually in a, in, in a, in a, in a bad shape. So can you believe <laughs> that? Yeah. Bloody hell. So yeah, he's gonna he, instead he's gonna shit all over Inter on Saturday or something. Yeah, exactly. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's where you were going with that. No, I I, I I'm with you on that. No, I I, I'm, I gotta be honest. I, I actually think that uh, given where Inter are, I don't think they're gonna. I, I think they're gonna lose against Barcelona, but I expect I, I really expect a reaction against Sassuolo because I don't think Sassuolo are that good of a team. And if I'm not mistaken, Berardi isn't he injured now as well? Like yeah. we'll, yeah, yeah. we miss, yeah. Yes. Yeah, so if yeah, so if Berardi's gone, you know, the, 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 there's no Raspadori, no Scamacca. They, they don't have an Inter killer there, except for Pinamonti. So Pinamonti's going to score. <laughs> it's just that's fine, and he's probably going to score once or twice. But I still think that Inter will win. Um, I, I really think Inter will win against Sassuolo away because it's 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 a different. It's it's not that Sassuolo. If Berardi was playing, there's no way. But but he's not. So so I think um, I, I think actually think Inter will win against Sassuolo. I think it's going to be tight and ugly. And anxiety-inducing, and it's going to be yeah, one of those games where it's just disgusting, not fun to watch. But don't care, get the points because you need to have to get the points. And I think they will. I think they'll win one nil or two one or something like that. Uh, Mikey, where are you on this? Where are you on the Sassuolo thing? Uh, well, it's Sassuolo away, an earlier match start than you know usual. So anytime I see the Mape Stadium in daylight. <laughs> Um, I, I assume the worst, um, but yeah, I'm not as negative as I could be. I do think it'll be, you know, one of those tight wins where afterwards it takes you a while to calm down because you've been on stress out mode for 90 minutes, but Uh, it'll be nice to get a win. Hopefully. mm, Yeah. Any predictions for that? Uh, let's say, let's say two, one, cause I don't think there's, there's a way that Pinamonti doesn't score, but let's say Lataro gets, gets a brace back on the score sheet. You know, everything starts to look a little nicer. Mm, agreed. Right. Mo, what about you? Prediction. Draw. Shitty mm. draw. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, I'd take two shitty draws from both of these games. Um, right, let's uh, move on to the part of the show where we pay tribute with the piss out of and criticize someone or something heavily in the world of football, starting with the positivity. This week's Moratti, which we presented by the artist formerly known as Mr. Positivity, Mr. Mohamed Nasser. He's, he works a lot, he's intelligent, and he surprises uh, people sometimes with his uh, ideas. Not easy to find one person of this uh, quality. <laughs> yeah, clutching at straws here, man. Clutching at straws. No, uh, honestly, I would say uh, Aslani starting in an important, decisive game is my uh, Moratti of the week. Uh, the kid seems to have uh, a lot of uh, potential. It's a shame that it has to come at the expense of Rosovic's in- injury, but I mean, this is what squad depth is all about. 
Um, and even if Inzaghi was forced to play him rather than, you know, uh, slowly, uh, willingly uh, letting him join in with the squad, I think it's a good sign. I think ultimately the fact that, like we all agreed, you know, it wasn't a fantastic performance by Inter, but it was a good performance. Uh, we have to give everyone their due, but it was a decent performance, uh, marred by individual errors. So, all in all, uh, Aslani's presence from the from the first from uh, from, the, from the starting whistle is important, and it's a good sign. And I hope, I hope, you know, all this negativity aside. Uh, it, it, it is a, it is something to build on coming uh, coming into the next stretch. Mm, hope you're right. Um, and uh, personally, um, something we haven't discussed, but I I remember Simone Inzaghi playing three five one one at Lazio, and I think now's the time to do that um, in order to gain some balance. And he also did it at Inter in the beginning as well when he had Stefano Sensi in that trequartista role in, in the opening game against Genoa, his first game, uh, Simone's first game in charge. Right, uh, let's move on to something uh, much more negative. This week's Modji, which we presented by Mr. Michael McDonald. <laughs> Yeah, so to bring the the negativity back in, uh, <laughs> uh, if it had even left today, um, for me, it's the goalkeeping situation. I'm not going to say it's Samir Handanovic. That's too low-hanging of fruit. But I will say that the indecision between uh, going with Onana as the future or staying with Handanovic, who we know what his level is now. I'm not going to criticize it because that is him. You can't say he's not doing his job when this is the job that he does. So uh, I just want to see a decision made uh, because um, we saw uh, Simone Inzaghi come out in the press and say, oh, my goalkeeper didn't make any save, something to that, um, you know, that that note. But I just I need to see a decision. I want to see some faith personally put in Andre Onana. I would like to see Mm -hmm. him get a run of matches in something other than the Champions League. I want to see him consistently starting and I want to see what's there. And I hope that comes soon. Yeah, I'm with you one. I think everyone's with you on that 110 percent on everything you said. And I that, on, on that comment that you and Mo have both mentioned, I actually thought that was a really intelligent thing by Simone Inzaghi because what he says is he's asked about, you know, what he thinks about the game, and he says, look, we we it was the best performance. It's our best performance of it's our best game of the season. Uh, I saw my Inter. We started playing the way I wanted to. Our goalkeeper barely made a save. Now, our go- goalkeeper didn't have to make a save or is 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 very interesting choice because he's he's sending a message here in my opinion sending saying look we played well our goalkeeper didn't even have to make a save but we still conceded two goals which suggests it's individual errors both on the defense and midfield but also the goalkeeper i think that's a really that's a really diplomatic and clear way of him sending to handanovic a message as well um uh, and without hanging him out and and and, and you know crucifying him in the media it, I, I just found it really interesting on, on, on Inzaghi's, per, per, you know, from, from Inzaghi to do that. Right. Let's move on to something much more comical. This week's uh, Frog, which we presented by Mr. Fulvio Santucci. Yeah, so as you know, uh, I mean, if you heard the show earlier, you know that uh, the frog uh, is a uh, not explored path in the show for me. It's actually the first time I did that. I do that. So I decide to go where the awkward things happen every weekend. My beloved <laughs> Bundesliga, Germany. Yes, it's always, <laughs> it's always like that. So the match now is uh, Werder Bremen versus Borussia Mönchengladbach. So Bundesliga match, of course. And uh, we are in the 37 minutes in the first half, and the result is 3-0 for uh, Werder Bremen. So basically a compromised match for Borussia Mönchengladbach. Um, so the situation on the pitch you need to imagine is the same uh, of the last uh, uh, of the last action the, in the last Super Cup. You remember everybody the, the goal of Sanchez, and you remember how the action went. So the cross from the left to the defender alone. Uh, that actually do something that uh, he shouldn't do. Okay, the same situation, right? Cross from the left uh, and this defender alone. So this defender, you may have uh, you may have heard a couple of things about him. It's Remy Ben Sebaini. It's a target oh, for you. Oh dear. 
<laughs> yeah, so it's it's actually alone, and that's this uh, this cross from the left, which is actually not dangerous at all. I mean, he's alone, he's not surrounded by Werder Bremen players, he can do anything. He can just control the ball, he can sweep the ball, he can just, just let slip away the ball because uh, it will, will be out or on the side. Instead, what he what he what he's gonna do right now is actually is actually think to go to sweep with the back heel, right? So you're joking. You know, yeah, no, no, I'm not joking. I'm not joking. You can you can see it. It's uh, it's uh, it's it's, every, it's everywhere now. So he went with the back heel and actually scored a memorable own goal, which makes four nil for Werder <laughs> Bremen in the first half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not joking, guys. I'm not joking. It's really, it's really, it's really comical. And uh, you know, the ma- the match is uh, is going to finish five uh, one for Werder Bremen. So nothing, nothing unexpected at that point. But uh, I just when I when it's so funny like this, I just thought, okay, this is a target for Inter. Well, it might fit well in an insane team if it's, it's managed to do this kind of defensive interventions. <laughs> <laughs> That's extraordinary. Well done, Fulvio. Brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, of course, Inter are linked with him. <laughs> of course we are. The guy Ranocchia has the situation. Well done. Right. Um, that's all we had time for this week. I'd like to thank you, Mo, for coming on. A great, uh, as always. You're on mute, Mo. And in true fas- uh, Mo fashion, I have uh, mute issues uh, while saying goodbye. Thank you so much for having me. It was a great episode. I feel much, much better. So now I kind of feel like uh, what uh, what all the other guests uh, felt like when uh, when I worked uh, their issues out with positivity. So thank you very much, in particular, Fulvio, for, uh, for, for helping me see some silver linings. <laughs> Mr. Fulvio Santucci, always a pleasure. Thanks for coming on. Great to be back, Nima. Looking forward to the next recording. Thank you, everyone. And Mr. Michael McDuffie, uh, make sure to check out his podcast, Brothers of the World podcast. And Mike, Michael, let me know where, where, where can people find you and, and the podcast? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, you can find my personal Twitter at MXHEO underscore. It is completely... Um, you cannot pronounce it, so I, I always have to spell it out, which is kind of goofy. And also, um, at BOTW Pod on Twitter and Instagram, which isn't used. But yeah, I mean, <laughs> if anyone is looking for another inter podcast, because there's plenty of space in the inter podcasting world, especially in English, um, it's a little less structured. It's a little more of a audio plus visual property. Um, it's <laughs> it's it's a fun time if you just wanna if you want your De- hard in-depth analysis your journalistic credibility come here um <laughs> to studio enter if you just want to see some guys talk about enter and say whatever um yeah check out brothers of the world podcast well it was a pleasure having you make sure everybody to f- check checks out brothers of the world pod i'll be linking to that in the article and everywhere else uh everyone until next time i'm your host nima tali rutsari wishing you a good week stay safe take care of each other six points and sempre e solo forza Inter.